So in my last video, I ran into a problem of constantly running out of dynamite to throw. So for this challenge run, I chose to use the weapon that you never run out of and you never need to repair. So today I'm finding out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only your fist? I start off like every regular Sunday, dazed and confused with a massive headache. I'm going to skip the build for a second because I ended up changing some things around. All you need to know is that I chose skilled for the plus 5 in all skills. That will be important when I finalize my character. Anyway, I skipped the tutorial and sold off my items to Chet. Also I want to lay down some ground rules for the future New Vegas runs. I can't use any of the weapons and armors given to me by the courier stash. I can sell them for caps, but that DLC pretty much negates any challenge in the early game. Now that we got that out of the way, I ventured onward to finalize my character. I changed up my look to someone with a mustache that I wish I had the confidence to rock in real life, and then signed my special points. I went 10 in strength, 1 in perception, 9 in endurance, 1 in charisma, 6 in intelligence, 8 in agility, and 5 in luck. I chose medicine, unarmed, and science for my tag skills. Medicine and unarmed for obvious reasons, and science because I had planned from the beginning to sell Jack some recipes for slasher. That'll come in handy down the line. For my skills I chose heavy handed and skilled. I made probably the wrong choice in relying on base damage rather than criticals which is why I kept my luck at 5 and chose heavy handed. Even though after this run is over and I'm thinking back on it, I still don't know if that was the right way to go. Also remember when I told you I picked up skilled as one of my traits in the beginning? Well I chose it again here because apparently the plus 5 to every skill stacks when you rebuild your character, so every skill now has a plus 10. Shout out to TKS Mantis for showing me that. Like I normally do, I went up to kill the geckos to test my build. And things went horribly. I decided that maybe I should get a couple levels under my belt before going off and trying to pick fights by myself. So I talked to Ringo to start the Ghost Town gunfight. That actually went a lot better. Also when I died trying to fight the geckos, I had to re rebuild my character. Everything's the same, just, you know, mildly annoying that I had to do that twice. I entered the shack outside of Good Springs to pick up the star bottle cap and summon Malcolm Holmes. After the level up from the Ghost Town gunfight, fighting the powder gangers outside the shack as well as the convicts inside the Bison Steve Hotel was a lot easier. Fists don't deal a lot of damage, but I'm pretty sure it's doubled in vats. So killing these low level convicts was pretty easy, if not a bit time consuming. I even picked up a hockey mask that gave me points in unarmed, so for the time being I'm gonna look like Jason Voorhees. That's fine by me, it even sounds like a decent Halloween run for later down the line. So I freed Deputy Pug and immediately replaced him. Prim now has the sheriff it deserves. Interpret that whatever way you please. Continuing my journey to the strip. I cleared out the police station and intended to wait for Malcolm Holmes in the cell here. I wanted to have a Hell in the Cell match, but even though Bonesaw was ready, ready. Spider-Man was no show. The fight with the Vipers outside of Nipton was a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. It was here though that it really came into perspective that the best offense is truly a good defense. All fights would pretty much be a war of attrition. Anyway, I made my way to Nipton, Oliver Swanick tried to run away from me, and I got some easy experience points for talking to some of the soldiers back in the Mojave app post. While I was there, Malcolm Holmes finally showed his ugly face around me. Even though it wasn't the Hell in a Cell match I wanted, killing him was as fun as ever. On my way to the strip, I formulated a plan. I wanted to get all of the unique unarmed attacks, even though I knew I probably would never use them. That and power armor was going to be a necessity. No matter who I side with, the final fight is going to be a bitch and a half. There are four unique unarmed moves. Pocket Sand, Ranger Takedown, Legion Assault, and the Scribe Counter. The first and easiest was the Ranger Takedown, so I made my way over to Novak and talked to Ranger Andy, and told him that all his friends were dead. After that I continued my way to the Strip. I went to go to this new amusement park I heard so much about. Boulder City, where there are all these rocks that I can punch to my heart's content. But this one guy was hogging the big rock that I wanted to hit, so I resort to old school bullying to get what I wanted. I called his brother a bitch, gave him a noogie, and stole his lunch money. I then paid off Monroe to let the cons go. I need to stay on their good side so I can get into the camp and find Jack and Diane. 
I also marked the 188 trading post for later. Then I was off to Red Rock Canyon. On my way over, I decided to clear out the entrance to Vault 3 since I was in the neighborhood. This was absolute pain. My plan was to try to just funnel the fiends into the building that I was in to deal with them one on one since bare knuckle boxing isn't the best strategy to deal with groups. But the damage output was so low that I was swarmed almost immediately. It once again became a war of attrition. I pumped myself full of as many drugs as I could and stims and hoped for the best. Although I did learn a valuable strat, and that was hard focusing on enemies with the best or most annoying to deal with weapons and pick them up after killing them. It makes it, if only slightly, easier. Oh, also this fight was the only time I successfully used the ranger takedown. And that's just mainly because I take the super slam perk later, which pretty much does that for me. Moving on, I finally cleared out the entrance into Vault 3, then ran my way over to Red Rock. At that point, I had blown through almost all of my healing supplies, so I was not about to get into a fight with another big ass group of fiends. I got to Red Rock and found the two American kids doing the best they can. Yeah, that's not going to be the last reference to the song, I'm sorry. So I sold Jack the recipes that I knew, Slasher being the most important. That's because Slasher is pretty much taking MedX and Psycho at the same time, but you can also stack it with MedX and Psycho, so it's like doing double the drugs. Then I went to find Anders, and I found that degenerate on a cross, so I let him down. I was then tasked to drop off a slightly suspicious package to someone in the Crimson Caravan. That was easy. Then I went to Vault 3 to deliver the highly suspicious package. I put on the con uniform and honestly, I looked like I fit in with them. I delivered the drugs, then went back to Diane to learn the ancient art of throwing sand in somebody's face. And that marked the end of my time with the cons. Oh yeah, the playthrough goes on long after the thrill of the challenge is done. Okay, I'm, I'm done with making references now. My next stop was Sloan to heal Snuffles and mark Hidden Valley on the map for later. I knew I was going to blow it up one way or another, but I needed to get the scribe counter first. So I used that dork's clothes that I bullied back in Boulder City and took the train to the strip. Once I got there, I was told that it must be nice to be able to carry a weapon even though I've only used my fist up until this point. My first order of business was getting a pretty dress, so I beat up some cannibal and hightailed it out of the casino. I got the scribe counter and then left Veronica at the trading post for the time being. Then I went back to the strip to confront Benny. I could have gone in hands blazing like last time, but I was getting my Hell in a Cell match one way or another. So I went back to Cottonwood Cove and took a romantic boat ride with the Cursor. This is around the time where I decided that I was going to side with Caesar. In order to get the Legion Assault, you need to be liked by them. So I went down into the bunker to destroy the generators, but you can't break them with your hands. So I just elected to turn them on since you can still side with the Legion anyway, even if you wake up the army. Then I finally, finally, got to live out my dream as a pro wrestler. And I decided to continue that career and became the arena grand champion. Wow, you're the grand champion. After fighting a competent fighter, I wanted a little bit of a break, so I punched some old dude in his hospital bed. Then I came back home and killed Mr. House. After that, I went back to Lil Caesars and got the Legion Assault ability from Lucius. Then I was off to the Boomers. On my way, I was jumped by some Brahmins that were suffering from mad cow disease threw some dirt on one of them, and then made him fucking explode. Then I beat George to death because there's not a single playthrough that I do where he lives. I made my way past the artillery bombardment, was rude to the guy at the gate, and met Pearl. I thought it couldn't hurt to get the XP for actually doing the quest, so I healed up the patients in the med bay, listened to Lil Pete talk about the boomers, and killed the ants in the array. Usually, I just use the sonic emitter thing that Loyal makes, but that's not my fist, so it was time to start punching some ants. I don't know why, but it took forever to find all the ants. All that was left for me after that was raising the bomber in Lake Mead. Just like that, after being able to name five Led Zeppelin songs, the boomers love me. Then I was finally tasked to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. But I wanted to do some side quests first. I almost never side with the Legion in my playthroughs, so I wanted to see what their quests were like. I saved Martina from the Omertas and was told to see Captain Curtis at Cat McCarran to blow up the monorail. I don't know what the issue was, but I could not get this quest to work. Since I'm vilified by the NCR, I have to wear an NCR uniform whenever I'm outside of the fort. 
but I guess since Legion troops aggro if you're wearing the NCR uniform, Captain Curtis would just bum rush me every time I went near him. So anyway, I brought Veronica to Hidden Valley since I wanted to skip the whole bomb collar bit, and I told her to wait in the corner as I became a member of the Brotherhood. Like I said earlier in this video, every fight is pretty much a war of attrition because of my pitiful damage output. So if I want to win fights, I need the best armor. That means I need to get power armor training. I was ultimately going to blow up the bunker though, so I pickpocketed the key cards. Anywho, getting the mission discs was pretty straightforward. I made sure to pick up all the power armor so I can repair the set that the Elder gives me. After that, I did the most annoying quest in New Vegas. Seriously, I don't know how anyone does this quest without a high assigned skill. Then it was just a matter of talking to Ramos and Hardin is now the new Elder. I did this because I thought it would be easier to wipe out the Van Graffs than to fight a mountain full of super mutants. Also, McNamara wants you to go vault diving, which is not on my to-do list. Originally, I was going to go in and start throwing punches at the Van Graffs, but that was not happening. So I opted to let the wrong person into the store. I did have to kill Simon on my own, which took forever as you can expect. Then I went back to Hardin to get my power armor. And as a big thank you, I rigged the bunker to explode. Also, I told Veronica to wait somewhere in the bunker assuming she'd die in the explosion, but after I left there was still a marker saying where she was. I went back inside to check, but all I found was a single paladin. This fight took forever. I knew this was kind of a test run for the heavy troopers in the endgame, and well, I was really not looking forward to having to do that. To be fair, I didn't have the piercing strike perk yet, so hopefully that'll make the fight with the heavy troopers a little bit easier. Anyway, I got back to the fort, played doctor, and picked up the firing mechanism for the howitzer. Next, I was told that Kimball has to die, and I'm the one that has to do it. It took a couple of attempts, but all I had to do was pop a shit ton of drugs, turn on a stealth boy, and take some turbo to catch up as Kimball was running away. Then it was time for Hoover Dam. Boy oh boy, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. The regular NCR troopers, and even the rangers were pretty easy to deal with. I was punching them over sandbag piles, I even punched one guy off the dam. I was starting to get a little cocky thinking the rest of the dam would be that easy. Then I got inside the main building. I had to deal with three heavy troopers, and let me tell you, this was absolute hell. I burned through so many stims and chems, and I wasn't even close to General Oliver. But little did I know, the worst was yet to come. Since I blew through all of those stim packs in the lobby, I elected to just run past most of the fighting to save supplies. The NCR rangers in the trap room were unbearable. I died a bunch of times. A bunch of times. Thankfully I got lucky one attempt after the NCR ranger glitched out and spawned right in front of me and was blown up by his own landmine. The next ranger was near fucking impossible. Both of these rangers spawned with 9 super stim packs. This dude used all of them. All of them. Fighting this ranger alone took 10 minutes of constant punching, but that was still nothing. I still had to fight General Oliver and his posse. The strategy here was kind of the same as the fight with the fiends from early on in this video. I hard focused on the troopers with super sledges since those are the most annoying to deal with since they can block. After finally killing them or getting lucky and knocking the sledge out of their hands, I'd pick it up as fast as possible. This fight was pain. Words cannot describe just how punishing this last part was. I chewed through all of my chems and stims. The damage output of just fist really showed in this fight because not in vats, it takes like 15 punches to knock one bar of health down. Honestly, if it wasn't for the super slam and piercing strike perks, I don't think this last fight would have been possible. Like after the first few troopers died, the fight was just me knocking them down to the ground and clicking my mouse until they stopped moving. Also this fight took 20 minutes. But in the end, it was all over. I put on my best top hat, saw to the burning of the dead, and proved yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas with only your fist. This run was a lot of fun. Minus the last two fights in Hoover Dam, the other fights were actually kind of enjoyable, if not time consuming. 
Again, I still don't know if it was the best idea to not focus on crits, but it is what it is. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And leave a comment about what challenges you'd like to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and God bless.